What's up guys, welcome to another review. This will be my very first time behind the wheel of a Ferrari. Can't believe it's taken this long considering I've driven many other supercars, McLarens, Lamborghinis, Porsches. But yeah, this is my first time behind the wheel of a, a prancing horse. This is a 2008 Ferrari 599 GTB Fiorano. MSRP of this one as spec was $383,000, which is about a hundred grand over the base price of these back in 2008, which is around $280,000. The attention to detail in this cabin and on the exterior is absolutely exquisite. A few basic specs about the car, six liter V12, it's the F140 engine code, derived from the legendary Ferrari Enzo. Different variations of this engine have been used since then in V12 Ferraris. In this car, it produces 612 horsepower, roughly 450 pound-feet of torque revs to 8200 rpm we have the f1 automated single clutch sequential the co-owners are planning to do a manual conversion to this car which costs around thirty-five thousand dollars. this car weighs over 3700 pounds sending all that power to the rear wheels it has the magnetic dampers the magna ride suspension and yeah let's get started we're going to have the manatino set to sport mode here which has a slightly softer damper setting than the race mode i believe and gives you more of that traction and stability control i cannot believe <laughs> this day has finally come. You know what? This is not only the first Ferrari I'll have driven, it is also the first V12. Getting props from the uh, construction guy over here. So the weird thing about this transmission is it shifts quicker than you'd think for an old automated single clutch. However, similar to say the E46 M3 SMG gearbox, you do need to lift off the throttle between upshifts to get it to be smooth. Otherwise, it's quite a jerky experience. Downshifts are fine. They're rev matched and you know, you don't have to do anything different with the throttle. Wow, the steering rack is so incredibly quick. You barely need any steering input to get this thing around a corner. <laughs> That is the sound of a glorious, naturally aspirated V12 engine. Making over 600 horsepower. Carbon ceramic brakes on this car. The very first Ferrari, I believe, to actually have this option. And you have to get a lot of heat in these brakes before they start stopping. <laughs> the sound and the power, absolutely glorious. <laughs> I feel like I'm behind the wheel of something truly special. F1 derived engine in a 3,700 plus pound grand touring machine. <laughs> this is an experience, man. Now this car is on a narrow 245 section with front tire and a big old 305 out back. It's a bit unusual for a front midship car. You'd think it would be a little bit closer to a square wheel and tire setup. And I think that's because this car has a little bit of safety understeer built in. It's you know, no easy task for a mere mortal to control 612 horsepower being sent to the rear wheels. But it's just enough grip to have fun with this car in the corners and feel it actually move around. So we're gonna bump it up to race mode here, which firms up the dampers, I believe. It might actually quicken up the shifts as well. Let's start in first gear. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now, surprisingly enough, inside the cabin, you get a lot of really nice induction note from the engine, but not a whole lot of exhaust. It's not overly loud. It's not as high pitched as I would imagine. And I think that's just due to the header setup and the exhaust setup of this car. It's not like the Enzo. It's much less aggressive and more tuned towards GT style driving. Oh yeah, that rear end will move around on you. Just brush the throttle in second gear. 
and you get just a hint of oversteer. Now I'm going to lower the window just a bit so you guys can get a better sense of this sound. <laughs> oh my goodness, this thing. The rear is definitely traction limited. It was not easy to catch that little spurt of oversteer there. That was actually, admittedly, further than I should have pushed in that corner, in race mode at least. Bit of a butt puckering moment, if I'm being honest. Not really sure how I feel about these brakes. They take so long to get up to operating temp, and until that point, you do not have much braking confidence. It is a little bit scary. Also, the hypersensitive steering rack in this car takes some getting used to. I don't think I've ever driven a car, at least with this much power and with this level of liveliness that has such a quick steering rack. Coming out of corners when you're aggressive on throttle, you have to be really quick with your hands. <laughs> Beautiful job from these Magna Ride dampers. When the car senses that you're cornering hard, it'll actually firm up the dampers in real time. Really, really excellent suspension. This is the first generation Magna Ride, and many later cars, including Ferraris and uh, even Chevys, have used updated versions of the suspension, and it does a great job. It's tried and true. So we're gonna back it off back into sport mode. If I press this auto button here for the transmission, you won't have to use the paddles anymore, but I actually don't like it in auto mode because it's kind of hard to tell when it's going to upshift, and as a result, you don't really know when to lift off the throttle between shifts, so it is a pretty jerky experience. All right, guys, listen to this. I'm gonna hold both paddles so I can rev up the engine. Listen to how quick that revs. <laughs> oh yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. Got a weird little transmission failure warning on the dash just there when I was revving it in neutral, which is a little weird. Italian car anomaly. So now that we're backed off and just cruising at 2000 RPMs, this is a pretty good GT. There is a little bit of tire noise, but that's to be expected for a car of this type. But the overall ride quality and NVH is pretty good even by modern standards. As I said, the base price of this car, brand new in 2007-2008, was around $280,000. This one as spec $383,000. The owners, the co-owners, purchased this car a couple months ago on Bring a Trailer for $159,000 plus fees. So my question to you all is, do you think it's worth it to spend another 35 to 40 grand to convert this into a proper six-speed manual transmission? Personally, I think it's worth every penny considering this car was purchased at less than half of its MSRP and only has 12,000 miles on the odometer. I would argue that this is a bit of a bargain in the Ferrari world. It's just old enough to where it's near the bottom of its depreciation curve, but it's still modern enough to have decent ride quality, great interior build quality, and a couple of creature comforts. So with that being said, guys, thank you guys for joining me in my very first Ferrari experience. Hopefully more to come. A big thank you to uh, Yi Tao and Yue for letting me get behind the wheel of this V12 prancing horse. If you like the video, guys, leave a comment down below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you have not already. And as always, see you next time.